I know what an electric drill is for, right? It's a tool. I can see that. I can tell you what it's for. I can tell you the types of problems that you'd have using it. I can tell you what you should be careful about. I can tell you the dangers of using it. But that is very different from me actually picking up the tool and using it to drill a hole in something. Just because I've drilled a hole in a soft piece of hardboard and I go, okay, I've used an electric drill. I will not have the same experience if I try and use that drill on a plastered wall, on concrete, on bricks. Then I have to understand, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need a different drill bit. I need um, to, you know, I need to hold the machine slightly differently. There's something different. I can't actually use it on a different. So it's not as simple as going, well, drills are for drilling holes in stuff and leave it at that. I need to get used to using the tool, how it feels in my hands, how it feels with different materials. And I slowly start getting used to the skill of looking at the problem I have, looking at my toolbox and going, um, which tool would be most appropriate for this particular job? Otherwise, I'd look at it and go, well, I've got a piece of cardboard here and I need a hole in it. Let me pick up my electric drill. Well, no, just take a pen, you know, smack a hole, like smash a hole through the cardboard, Yvonne. But if I'm only thinking as rules, then my rule would be every time you need to put a hole in something, take a, you know, use your electric drill. Okay, so now I've got a piece of cardboard. Great, use the electric drill. And then you look and you go, I don't understand why the electric drill wasn't on the solution. Like electric drill is right. It, the electric drill is what you use to put holes in stuff. And you go, no, 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 but this is cardboard. You don't need to be using an electric drill to put a hole in cardboard. You go, how was I supposed to know that? Well, because you need to get used to using a drill and visualizing what types of problems this tool is developed for, the types of problems that it would be relevant for, and how to use it. And the only way we do this is by practice. And it's not about saying, I've done three questions, and so now I have a database of three different types of things. If it looks like that, the answer's there, and if it looks like that, and there. So we're like mentally drawing these big tables of all the different permutations of how this one thing looks. And if it's big, it looks like that. If it's small, it looks like that. If it's automatic, it looks like that. If it's uh, listed, it looks like that. If it's, then look, we want rules. Our personalities and our minds are wired for rules. We are not aware of how our thinking needs to change when we are working with tools. So we will go into the question and the first thing we will do is try and find the rules. I will look and I will try and find the stuff that triggers rules. When I see this, I must deal with that. So a lot of people and a lot of students try and turn their knowledge base for financial management into rules because that's what they understand. But they're not rules. They're tools. And the only way that we get used to using them and the only way is to practice this is how the tool works and to look at a new situation and go, well, now this is not the same. Would the same thing apply? Would it be different? What can I think about? I really need to understand the company. I really need to understand what they're doing in order to figure out and to match these two and to create a solution for them, stuff that they should be considered advising, whatever the case is. When you're thinking of your knowledge base, you've got to be asking yourself, is this a rule-based thing or a tool-based thing? And if it's a tool-based thing, man, that requires a different type of thinking. And it's not something that comes naturally to us. So we tend to stay away from it. So my students will use things like, uh, you know, I struggle with out-the-box thinking. And so that's why I struggle with strategy questions. No, 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 that's not your problem. You don't need to think out the box. You need to get used to using that tool. So you look and go, well, you know, my pestle process, pestle would be really good to, to, to discuss strategy issues. But just because you know what pestle is and what the P and the E and the S and the T and the E and the L stand for doesn't mean you can use it. Because, okay, great, so I need to think about the political situation. Or I need to think about political stuff when I am talking about strategy, but but... But what does that look like? Like, what, what does that mean? You can't just go, oh, I need to think of political stuff. Yeah, okay. And your client's going, oh, good point. Yeah, political stuff. Yeah, that's important. What, what, what does that mean in my life? Like, what does that mean to me? 
Um, how, how does that affect me? I've just told you about my business. So be aware of the difference between rules and tools, the type of thinking that it requires, and understand that when you're dealing with stuff that is a tool, the only way to get better at using it is to use it in different situations and learn the skill of going, okay, what's this now? Okay, what's this now? And yes, the knowledge base, the theory is still there. You should think of the political stuff. That's the theory. That's you know, that's the should be. You should think of theoretical, of political stuff. But the application is like, um, what about the political stuff? Like, what, what, what how, what, what, what should I be thinking here? And that is experience, which means you need to go through and do more and fail more questions. And the reason I say fail more questions is not because you have to fail, but because you will fail them. Because you're like, oh yeah, I can see, I can see that pestle would be valuable here, but I don't know. I'm supposed to think of supplier stuff, but like what, what would that look like? If you've never run a business, if you've never been in that environment where you've been sitting around a table in strategic discussions or operational discussions, of course it's all just theory to you because you're like, who cares about suppliers? Suppliers are people we buy stuff from and then there's goods receive notes and then we pay for them and creditors and like, so what? Now you've got to think about it as the business. It is rules, tools, very, very different. That is one of the reasons you struggle with discussion questions that are tool-based, not rule-based.